In early August 1972, the Bauer family spent a few days at their cottage in Thornbury, Ontario. On the 11th of the month, Oscar, her father, made his way to the cottage, having had to work a few days while the rest of the family began their vacation. Five days later, after rainy weather had washed out the trip, he and Ingrid decided to return home, leaving Gisela, Ingrid's mother, and Kevin, her brother, there by themselves. The pair returned home with Oscar starting on laundry and Ingrid headed to her room with her suitcase. Brent, who had remained home, was also present. Later that evening, the striking blonde, long-haired girl wanted to surprise her boyfriend, Larry Teeple, as she had been pining for her childhood sweetheart while she was at the cottage, so she asked her father if she could visit him at his house. At 9.30 p.m., she left her home in bare feet to catch a ride with a passing motorist. This would be the first time she would be hitchhiking at night, and she had no money or any belongings with her. I'll be home by 10.30 p.m., she reported to her father, Oscar, before she left the house. On one of the last people to see her was her big brother, Bent Bauer. He, she was there on Islington Avenue, approximately 300 yards from her home, waiting for a drive to take her south, he said, recalling how he ran out to grab some milk for his cereal and a package of cigarettes shortly after Ingrid left. It was a different time back then. There was no public transit and mom and dad's taxi was reserved when it was really needed, not for casual socializing. Unwritten rules involving hitchhiking back then were simple. You don't go with a person if they look scary or if there are too many people in the vehicle, he said. It's no, it was normal to walk miles and not have too many cars pass you or have two or three come by and not pick you up, he said but parents would often pick you up because they'd want their own kids picked up in return. After Ingrid left home, a friend of hers called asking for her. When told she was, had left to visit Larry, the friend called his home only to learn that she wasn't there either. Concerned, Larry called the Bauer home to inquire about Ingrid's whereabouts. Immediately, Oscar knew something was very wrong. So while he and Brent drove the road between Kleinberg and Woodridge, Toward the Teeple home, Larry uh, jumped on his bicycle and rode towards the Bauer residence. Upon arriving at Larry's house, Oscar notified the authorities that his daughter was missing. The family telephoned Ingrid's fa friends for news, but when none of them were able to account for her whereabouts, they searched the ditches of the routes she'd normally travel, in the case she may have been the victim of a hit and run. After a frantic hunt that night, volunteers came out of the woodwork, some 200 people, according to an old Toronto Star article, who helped scour the 20 square miles surrounding the Bauer home. It went on to say that police officers waded into the Humber River for eight kilometers. Scuba divers plunged 40 feet underwater in an old gravel pit, and she was never found. At approximately 9.45 p.m., a witness remembered seeing her walking south on the west side of Islington Avenue. Another sighting was reported by Terry Bell, who was then 18. He saw Ingrid walking south on the west side of the road at approximately 9.45 p.m. Several Kleinberg residents reported hearing the cries of a young person near Islington Avenue and Sevilla Drive around 10 p.m. that night. Residents also told police that they had seen a pickup truck in the area, but a search of the location turned up nothing. At approximately 12.28 p.m. on August the 17th, the local authorities listed her as a missing person on the provincial-wide telex network, which broadcast her description on police radio every, three, every hour for three weeks. Hoping for a quick resolution to the case, the York Regional Police set up a five-person detective squad, which worked to interview hundreds of witnesses, including prisoners who had been previously involved in abductions, along with distributing over 15,000 missing persons posters. They also traveled across Ontario as well as to Montreal, following up on potential leads. Oscar, the company he worked for, and the York Regional Police each put up $1,000 for a refund for a, re for a reward. A billboard company along with designers and lithographers volunteered numerous billboards at no cost, featuring Ingrid's picture, an appeal for information and details about the $3,000 in reward money. As a result, numerous tips were called in with Oscar <clears throat> personally manning the phone, which had been attached to a police recording device. Unfortunately, these tips did not lead to Ingrid's location. 
There were numerous appeals made to viewers and listeners on television and radio for information regarding the case. As a result, her disappearance became one of the most publicized up to that point in Ontario's history. During the course of the in initial investigation, there were five suspects. However, all were interviewed and th through confirmed alibis and they were cleared of any involvement. As of now, the case is with the York Regional Police Cold Case Unit with tips still coming in from time to time. In 2017, more tips were received and also followed up on. Ingrid Bauer was born to her parents, Oscar and Gisela Bauer. The family was also consisted of her brothers, Kevin and Brent, lived in a small Ontario village of Kleinberg, formerly known as Vaughn. Oscar, a German immigrant, worked as a purchasing manager for Kodak Canada Limited, and the family were known for being a tight-knit unit. Ingrid was 14 and is described by those who knew her as a teenager who was very mature for her age. She was straight-laced, not known for smoking cigarettes nor drinking alcohol, and got good grades while she was in school. In her free time, she would take modeling courses. The family's home was located on Pennon Road on East to West Street that runs west from Islington Avenue for approximately four miles north of Highway Number 7 and along the south edge of Kleinberg. Given Kleinberg was semi-rural and not as developed as other residential areas around Toronto, there was no public transit and thus Ingrid often found herself hitchhiking in order to visit Larry, who was also 14 years old. His home was only 4.7 kilometers away at Pine Grove Home in Woodridge, which allowed them to see each other often. Before Oscar passed away, he had Ingrid legally declared dead, Brent said his father blamed himself every day for, his, for her disappearance up until the day he died. Ingrid Bauer went missing from Kleinberg, Ontario, in Canada on August the 16th, 1972, when she was 14 years old and was last seen wearing a tan sweater with red apples on it and a pair of bell-bottom slacks. Ingrid Bauer was born on February the 17th, 1958, and is described as being the 14-year-old girl when she went missing. She was slender in stature, five feet, six inches tall, and weighed approximately 100 pounds. She has a light, light complexion and had long, straight, dark blonde to brown hair with brown eyes. Those with any information regarding this case are asked to contact the York Regional Police at 1-905-830-0303 or the York Regional Police Cold Case Unit at 1-866-876-5423, extension number 7865, or you can email the investigators directly. You can also, if you want to remain anonymous, call Crime Stoppers. That's at 1-800-222-TIPS. That's 1-800-222-8477. You can also leave a tip online at www.1800-222-tips.com or text a tip by sending tip York and a message to crimes. That is 27463. 637.